Hello, my name is Phil Smith and welcome to this very special edition of the UCD Festival. This year our event is called UCD Festival at Home for obvious reasons, but it represents a fantastic opportunity for the global community to virtually come home to where it all began. And if UCD is a place where you're considering to work or study, I give you a chance to get a snapshot of behind the scenes of what happens in life here. And if you're an interested soul, maybe a chance to, to get to grips with what kind of work happens here. So in these extraordinary times, join us for the UCD festival at home on your laptop, smartphone, tablet. But remember that even though we've moved online, the engaging activities, the inspiring stories and the people are still all available for you on ucd.ie forward slash festival. So if you're an alumni, a student, a future student or just an interested soul, join me on this journey behind the lab door where we'll take a look at what happens in UCD science and engineering and get to meet some of the people and some of the research that's having such a big impact on the world. Now UCD itself was founded in 1854, so it's been around for a long time, but the O'Brien Centre for Science was built in 2013, and there's still another phase to go after that. And all of these wonderful people contributed to this, the biggest capital investment in science that the Irish government has ever done. The building is divided into North, which is physics and maths, South, chemistry, east, teaching and science and outreach, and west, which is biology and geology, with a central hub where lecture theatres and classrooms are located. Both undergraduate and postgraduate students use these facilities in the Science Centre. Now, DN200 isn't a general science degree, it's a common entry into science. And what's really wonderful about that is, even if you know exactly where you're going, you still get to sample other disciplines as part of your degree and get a feel for them. What's really nice and what actually worked for me when I entered a common entry science course was that I didn't know exactly what I wanted to study. So I got to try physics, chemistry, biology, computing and maths and even a little bit of sport. And that's what wonderful about the Horizon programme here in UCD, but the general start is you can figure out what way you're going, what your path is and see where you end up. And I ended up as a physicist. It's also important to note that other faculties use the facilities here at the O'Brien Centre for Science, such as medicine, engineering, uh, agricultural science students. It's also really nice to know that there are electives here, so art and science can be explored as an elective through your course through the UCD Horizons programme. Twelve modules are taken each year, which two of these can be elective between first and third year, so you can really broaden your wings and, and try out anything you want. There's lots of art pieces and things that are in UCD and UCD Science that help to inspire, but one of the most inspiring things for me is that they call the restaurant Pie. Like, Pie? Maybe it's just me who's a nerd, but I think that's fantastic. This is Science North, where physics is located. And in actual, in phase three, this is going to be renovated and brought up to a new standard again and to match the levels of work that have in physics. But let's take a look at what actually goes on inside. Physics is about the fundamental laws of the universe that govern living as well as non-living systems. It's a fundamental science involving a deep understanding of nature derived from the mathematical and experimental insights that physicists provide. I say this with great confidence and aplomb because I'm a physicist and obviously I hire myself in huge regard. But physics is a subject that always constantly asks, why? And students in UCD, when they come to study here, have access to facilities such as radiation labs, large-scale experiments at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, and data from different satellites to carry out experiments. So when you're doing your undergraduate here, you can go from the smallest detail to even the widest outreaches of space. This is the XMM Newton, named after Sir Isaac Newton, the famous physicist. And XMM stands for X-ray multi-mirror. And there are multi-mirrors inside this. And there are made out of thin layers of gold and nickel that look out at how heavy elements are synthesized in space. Now, this is a model, but the actual physical satellite that's in space right now is three times this size, which is massive. Because if you look at how big this one is, you can imagine how big the real one is. And it costs about 25,000 euro per kilogram to get these things into space. So this is a, a big mission. Now, you can see the three 
tubes that are in the middle of this satellite and that's where the x-ray detectors are and there's a model in here there's 58 different mirrors and they kind of overlay like a like a russian doll you can imagine what i find fascinating is not only are you working on something that has been associated with the European Space Agency, which is cool in itself. You're working on something that has, that gives us an understanding of what the universe is made up and how it was created and maybe where it's going next. So what you do here can have a massive impact, not only globally, but universally, as in the whole universe. How cool is that? Sometimes people think it's a difficult subject, but even students with no prior physics knowledge can take up this subject at college level and explore, like we said, anything from the smallest atom to the far reaches of space. Now, some of you out there might have a particular image of what physics and physicists are supposed to look like with mad hair and Einstein looking features. And, you know, some of us do look like that and that's fine. But physics itself, is one of the most cutting edge areas of science and in areas that you might not necessarily consider or be aware of. Like in UCD, the nanobio group here is looking at complex biological systems and how things work on a nanoscale. Like you're thinking of 10 to the minus nine meters, like nanometers, really, really small. And this stuff will have implications uh, to Alzheimer's, to photosynthesis, to G CJD. So really looking at what can happen in the future on a biological system, but using physics, this interdisciplinary system. Uh, one of the other amazing things that's happening in November 2019, the Center for Physics and Health and Medicine was established. And what they're doing is looking at like how you can detect diseases earlier, how you can see them, how you can, by identify them, then maybe cure them, and how that interdisciplinary nature, nature of research has grown to include physics and prepare the next generation of physicists, engineers, scientists using physics to, to solve our problems and make our world a better, safer, healthier place. Other projects that are happening in UCD physics are Dr. Morgan Fraser is working on the biggest and brightest explosions in the sky, from massive stars going supernova at the end of their lives to ultra-dense neutron stars colliding with a burst of gravitational waves. Professor James Rice is using light to control over properties so that we can figure out how to better make medical diagnostic tools. Dr. Nuala Caffrey, she uses computational modeling to study physics on new materials which have potential to really advance our technology and our environmental impact on the world. She's currently working on how electrode materials are the next generation of rechargeable batteries. Brian Rodriguez's group is working on using sharp diamonds to cut particular magnetic nanostructures so we can look at creating fantastic new materials that'll have a major impact on the world. So there's lots of people working at UCD Physics and lots of research happening in lots of different areas that you may not have considered. And there is way more. So for more information, take a look at the UCD Physics website. And you never know, you might even see some of the alumni pictures that are here and the fantastic fashion that has existed over the years, but not a single sock and sandal in sight. But if you have a picture of yourself when you studied here, please send it in to us. Or if you're some more information that you'd like to find out, get in touch, we'd love to hear from you. And that's really what we all we have from UCD Physics. What's X on the agenda? Geology, where we get down to earth. The UCD School of Earth Sciences is the largest geoscience school in Ireland, offering both undergraduate and graduate courses. The school focuses on field and research skills, with Earth Sciences as a focus on the past, present and future of the Earth system. The school has an internationally recognised reputation for excellence in teaching and research in multiple areas, including fault analysis, geochronology, geophysics, marine and petroleum biology, paleobiology and paleoclimatology, where you look back through history and even prehistory about what was happening to our world in terms of climate. Now, one of the great things that's in UCD is that we have a dedicated science outreach lab where kids come in to learn about science. And we always have one or two girls in every single class that ask about rocks, minerals or gems. And we love showing them and talking to them about it. But probably one of the most interesting things is that we told them that it's not called geology. We go to earth sciences and in earth sciences, there's a whole breadth of research that they're maybe not aware of. And that's what we really love is broadening their minds and showing them other things that aren't just about rocks or, or minerals. But there, like obviously there is, and like even you see in this case, like there's ammonites, 
which are old kind of creatures that used to fill up with water. These are small ones they used to get up to like six and a half meters wide and they used to fill with air and move with their shells along. And it's really interesting to tell the kids and to show them and that they're holding something that's 350 million years old and that blows their mind. But what blows their mind even more is when we show them something like this and then we show them lava, this basalt which flows in lava down the bottom and that's only from 2014 so it's five years old and then this is 350 million years old so we create that wonder and then they think about like rocks and other things and they only think about well maybe are we only looking at Ireland and the earth sciences here looks at how international uh, geology and, and the study of earth sciences is and that kind of opens up a new world as well so it's not only that it's not just rocks that it's not just Ireland but also further on from that that there's a whole way range of data analytics technology and other things that are used within the earth sciences that people aren't aware of like take example this stuff here this is salt from the Dead Sea and this is one of the projects that, that Doc, uh, Owen is working on here, Don, uh, Dr. Owen Holohan. And what he's working on is that the Red Sea used to be a certain height. And then over years, and like from, you'll see a pattern from 1965, how it retreats away. And what the Dead Sea is known for is its high salt content. And it left a layer of salt. And as it retreated, that salt has left a layer on top that's... that's the groundwater is now invading, eroding, and you're getting these sinkholes. And what Earth Science is doing, and what Owen is doing, is using drones to fly over areas near the Dead Sea, where you'll see these massive depressions. And in these depressions, they can figure out that if the sinkholes happened here and they're migrating up the coast, by studying where they're going, how they've happened, they can understand and predict and stop it happening in the future. And also maybe look at how roads can be planned in the future or how they might have to be moved. So it has huge infrastructural impact on a country's operation. And this is all from what people sometimes think, oh, they're just looking at rocks. This has a huge impact on the world. And this also has an impact back in Ireland. If you take a look at the footage now, you'll see how sinkholes form in the west of Ireland. Now, these are formed in a different way over a much longer period of time, but by comparing and contrasting them, you might be able to better understand what's happening. The school is the lead participant and host for the Irish Centre for Research in Applied Geosciences, or ICRAG, which is one of the 12 national SFI centres. ICRAG conducts applied research into groundwater, hydrocarbons, marine geoscience and raw materials. And those raw materials are what we need to look at to how we can build our future, either in renewable energies and the infrastructure that we need to provide to create that future. They also look at geochemistry, geophysics and 3D modelling uh, of what's happening in our world. And we're going to take a look at how they do some of that modelling right now. Another research project that's happening in the School of Earth Sciences is using drones as well to mathematically model layers and structures of rock near the ocean. Tom and Javier are working on taking drones, mathematically modeling that structure, and then because that structure is the same kind of structure that's under the ocean floor, they can use that model to better extract hydrocarbons from underneath or in that rock. Now, unfortunately, hydrocarbons are gonna be around for a long time because we can't just immediately shift to renewable energy. So to figure out a way to more efficiently better extract these hydrocarbons with less impact on the earth and less of an environmental impact, it has a more sustainable approach. So we're trying to better figure out ways to understand the mathematical model of these stone, this rock, so that we can do things quicker, safer and cleaner. And that's some of the work that iCrag also does here, which is based here in UCD. So there you have geology, earth sciences, and there's maybe a little bit more happening here than you thought, and there certainly is more happening than we discussed. Technologically advanced, looking at old versus new, predicting the future, and also what resources we'll need to create that future. Wonderful men and women here working on lots of things that, from a small country like ours, can show the whole world and our global picture, not only of the people, but really what's happening beneath our feet. And we can use little examples. We're going to try and use a simple science piece here now to explain something big and explosive. Just like our little impact can have a massive one on the world, let's try an experiment. Uh, safety equipment on. Well, I did say that there was going to be an explosion. Well, 
One of the things that we do in the Science Outreach Lab here in UCD is that we talk about how things connect together in interdisciplinary ways. So this one is about, you may have done an experiment at home before where you get vinegar and baking soda and you mix them together and you get that up of carbon dioxide which looks like a baking soda volcano. We're going to do our own little version of a volcano related to geology. So volcanoes are, have an impact on climate change whether you realize it or not. Just not because they're heating stuff but because they're throwing stuff up into the atmosphere. And an atmosphere, the atmosphere around Earth is like our blanket and the thicker that we make that the hotter that it traps air. However with volcanoes it throws different sizes of particles up into the air. So at some stages it can block sun going down and being trapped in earth and it can bounce back into space but other sized particles make it actually trap heat inside earth so it can have two types of an effect heating and cooling the planet so what we're going to do is kind of make a model of our own volcano with different sized particles and we're going to have to create an explosion for that to happen and that's exactly what we're going to do now so in here we've got some water which is often a bit that people forget to tell you about when you're doing this experiment it's warm water and in here in this bottle we've got some liquid nitrogen the interesting thing about liquid nitrogen is that it's minus 196 degrees celsius but when it turns from liquid into a gas it expands 1700 times so if you cap it it wants to expand out and this bottle is designed to be pressurized so it'll fight against it and eventually it'll blow up and throw up and because the sides here are strongest the easiest path of least resistance is up straight up through what we're going to put in now which is uh, ping pong balls and other sides balls to represent the small and big particles that happen when a volcano erupts so let's do it so tightening this bottle up goes into water oh and what should happen is the pressure should build up inside the bottle create a catastrophic failure and eventually the bottle will burst and blow up Whoa! <laughs> uh. now that is how volcanoes explode <laughs> so Ireland's largest university deserves Ireland's largest science outreach experiments. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed coming behind the lab door to see what some of the stuff that happens in UCD is and how we can communicate it or get people interested but what we're really interested in ourselves is hearing from you. If you were alumni here, if you're interested in coming here, if you're an interested soul like we mentioned before, get in touch, talk with us, ask questions, we'd be delighted to answer. And Right now I've got a lot of cleaning up to do, but you know, that's fine. We had fun and see you next time.